One of the best parts of being a developer is the ability to work from home. I mean, what beats not having a commute, wearing what you want to work, being comfortable, and pooping in your own bathroom? But I've gotten this question a few times in my DM and it got me thinking. Is a remote developer position a good choice for somebody just breaking into the industry? Now, personally, before I became a developer, I had like no experience working remotely. I mean, there was this stint for like four months when I taught martial arts where we did it over Zoom, <laughs> but that's, that's not like a remote developer position. You know, that was completely different. So when I took my first developer position, not only was it my first developer position, but it was also my first time working remotely. And for me, it was a pretty good experience overall. I'm not gonna lie. But does that mean it's a good experience for everyone? Well, that depends on you. So right off the bat, the big problem that everybody brings up is how much harder it is to, to learn and to ask questions, you know, remotely. Hey y'all, future Michael here. Apparently I went off on this tangent without being clear, so let me specify now. When it comes to learning your individual role, at the company and like doing your developer job, it can be kind of hard to communicate. Now I can toss this one back to future Michael and he can pretty much send it home from here instead of face-to-face. -face. And yes, it is easier to communicate face-to-face -face and get answers to those questions, but that doesn't mean it's impossible if you're working remote. I know every company is gonna do it differently. At my company, we use Slack and I've never had a problem like, you know, slacking somebody a question or jumping into a voice chat with somebody and sharing screens and going over information like that. There hasn't been a problem that's so big or so complex that we can't find a resolution, you know, using those tools. Now, sometimes scheduling can get in the way, you know, people have meetings at different times and you might have to wait around <laughs> to get the help or assistance that you need. But all in all, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't find communicating to be very challenging, if at all. I think if you're the type of person that has a hard time asking those questions in person, you probably still have a hard time asking those same questions online. I don't think the difficulty will be too different between the two. For some people, not being face-to-face -face makes it easier to communicate. You know, like again, it just depends on the person. I also found that being a self-taught developer made things a lot easier. As a self-taught developer, you're used to doing everything on your own anyways, right? Like you're used to finding the resources, going over it again and again, and like drilling it into your head. But now you have the added benefit of being able to reach out to people who are smarter than you and better than you and you can cut down on the research time, but you still have that level of independence. You can give it a shot yourself. You developed your own processes already and you just have that extra layer of backup. I personally feel like the self-taught grind helped me out a lot, like just getting settled in with everything and it takes initiative, it takes discipline to be a self-taught developer. So having that helped out a ton getting settled in. Now, one of the biggest things that I struggled with, <laughs> with this remote developer position for my first developer position was communicating deadlines with people who weren't part of the development team. Actually, <laughs> all of my communications with people outside of the development team was probably not the best at first. When you're in person, you can get a better feel for the company as a whole and how the departments interact with each other. And you can see how the communication flows between all the different parts of your company. Being remote, you really don't see that. You can see it over some of the global channels or like individual project channels, but seeing that in text over Slack and seeing that in person, is a completely different feel. And that can really complicate things at first. You have to kind of figure out how everything works by trial and error for the most part. At least that's how it was for me. Like I'd message somebody on Slack and see if they were the person I needed to reach out to for whatever it was or, you know, on a video call, everybody would be talking. And I had no idea like what everybody's individual role is. Like I knew their title, but I really didn't know how they contributed to the team. And I don't want to hold up the meeting asking everybody, well, what is it exactly that you do? But it was one of those things that I had to learn over time, over the course of multiple meetings. It took me like, it took me about two months to get a general feel for how everything worked. And again, this was my first developer position, so there was already a lot to learn on that front. It really was challenging getting a feel for how the company worked. But that was the only real hurdle that I ran into in my experience. I know some other remote developers out there may run into other issues. It really does depend on your company, your culture. There's a lot of different factors in it, but I think the things I hit on in this video will be pretty much universal no matter where you go. Sure, the tools might change or the processes might be different, but I think the issues I ran into are gonna be pretty consistent regardless of what you're using. And I'll end with this. If you do decide to take a remote position for your first developer job, don't be afraid to like Slack everyone. <laughs> if you're not sure what someone does and you need to communicate something with them, just send them a hi, start a general conversation. Don't be shy, introduce yourself. And that will go a long, long way and make your life 
so much easier. So if there's anything you take away from this video, let it be that. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, do click that subscribe button down there, throw the video a like, help me feed the algorithm. Feel free to join a community discord, support the channel with the links below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.